All right, so this is number five in Mr. Bershtold's test review. Uh, number one, decimal operations, GCF, and LCM. So this is just a long division problem. It says 93,114 divided by 63. So if we remember this number, 93,114 has to go inside. It just goes in and out, right? So in and out. This goes right here. And then we have to figure out how many times can 63 go into 93? Well, it's kind of a hard number, but how many times can 60 go into 90? One time, right? Because 60 times 2 would be 120, which is too much. Um, so 63 times 1 equals 63. We're going to subtract. That equals 30. Next step is to bring down R1. So this actually becomes 301. All right, so the next step now is how many times can 63 go into 301? That gets a little bit tougher, right? What I would do is just round to 60, round down to 60, and, and round the 301 to 300. And then you can actually get rid of these zeros and say, how many times can 63 go into 300, or 6 go into 30? Well, that's 5. So let's see what 60 times 5 is, or 63 times 5. <clears throat> okay. And that's going to equal 5 times 3 is 15, right? Bring your one up here. And then 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 is 31. So this is actually 315, which is just over what we need to be. So we know it's going to be one number less than that, which is 4. And let's find out what 63 times 4 is. So again, I'm going to set it up. 63 times 4. Let's see what that turns into. Uh, well, 4 times 3 is 12. I'll bring my 1 up here. 4 times 6 is 24, plus the 1 equals 25, right? So that's 252. That's the answer we're going to take and put right here. And now we subtract. What's 301 minus 252? Well, we can't do 1 minus 2 because that is, this number is too small. So we have to borrow. We can't borrow from 0, so we have to go to the next number, which is 3. This becomes 2. This becomes 10. We're going to borrow from this 10, make it a 9. And this becomes 11. So 11 minus 2 equals 9. 9 minus 5 equals oops, 4. And 2 minus 2 equals 0. So we're done. But we have more numbers to work with, so we have to bring this number down. So now this becomes 4. 91. So yeah, they don't call this long division for, for no reason, guys. This is actually, we have to keep going on. So now we have 63 times what can equal 491. We know times 5 is 315, so it's going to be more than that. Um, let's see here. So 491 is close to 500, right? So let's try the same idea we did before. 60 can go into 500 how many times? Well, we can get rid of these zeros. You can always get rid of an extra zero if, if there's zeros on, on both these. So 6 can go to 50 how many times? If you know your math facts, you know that 6 times 9 equals 54, and 6 times 8 equals 48. So let's try 63 times 8, see if that's close. 63 times 8. Um, 8 times 3 is 24. Bring my 4 down here. Bring my 2 up here to regroup. 8 times 6 is 48 plus 2 equals 50. All right, 504 doesn't go into 491, so it's going to be one number less than this. So it's going to be 63 times 7. Wow, this is a complicated question, isn't it? Um, all right, so now we have to figure out what is 63 times 7.
7 times 3 equals 21. 7 times 6 equals 42 plus 2 is 44. So it's 441. All right, so now I'm going to bring this number over here and subtract. 491 minus 441. 1 minus 1 is 0. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 4 minus 4 is 0, so we're going to leave that. Now we have one more number we got to bring down, which is the 4. So this is 504. Hey, but lucky for us, when we're doing estimations, we already know, because we worked it out a second ago, that 63 times 8 equals 504. So we know this last number is going to be 8. Let me make that back. Oh, I don't know why I didn't turn black. There it is. All right. So this last number is going to be 8. And that's going to equal 504. And then 504 minus 504 is our answer. Okay, there's no remainder. There's no more numbers to bring down. So our final answer is right here. 1,478. Whew, that was a lot of work. All right. All right, number six. I'm actually not going to do it for you, but I'm going to get you started here. So we have 27.5 divided by 0 0.05. So um, what we are going to do is go in and out. So this one goes inside the house. This one goes outside the house. And we're dividing decimals here, so we don't actually start here. What we're going to do is get rid of the decimal um, that's located right here. And how do we do that? Well, we just move it over how many numbers? One, two, right? But the thing is, if I move this decimal over two times, I need to move this decimal over two times. So here's one. There's no number there. Two, right? My decimal's over here now. Um, the problem with that, though, is there's no number. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add a zero right here. And there we go. Now we have, so now our number, instead of becoming 0 0.05, it's just 5, right? Because I got rid of this decimal and moved it over two times. And 27.5 becomes 2,750. My decimal's over here at the end. All right, because I moved those over. And then it's just simple math for you guys. You're just going to figure out 5 can't go into 2. They can go into 7. How many times? 5 times 5 equals 25. Then you're going to subtract. And I wasn't lying. This is where I'm leaving you guys. 27 minus 25 is 2. The next step is to bring down your next number. So you're left with five right here. All right. Now you guys got to finish the rest. All right. All right. Number eight says, what is the least common multiple or LCM for 12 and 20? Um, so LCM, think of the list, right? We're going to make a list of numbers. So we're going to do 12. Um, let's see here. You need to skip count or just times two times three. That's kind of how it goes. 12. And then it becomes 24, then 36, then 48. I'm just like adding 12 every time. Um, 48 plus 12 is 60. Um, 60 plus 12 is 72. And we'll just stop there. We'll start doing the next number to see if we're anywhere near. So it's 20. And we're going to do our list again. 20, 40. 60, 80, 100. But if you actually notice, there are a couple numbers that are repeated, right? Our least common multiple are going to be the first ones, our smallest ones. So what's the first number in both these lists that are in both? Are, and that should be 60, right? So 60 is our LCM. Equals 60. Okay, there's actually a different method to do this too that I like to do. Um, 
It is called the cake method according to Ms. Gonzalez's class. Um, and what they do is they make a little, it's like an upside down division sign, right? It's like a layer of cake is what we call it in there. And we put both numbers in here, 12, 20. And then we think, what numbers can we divide into both of these numbers? Well, two, right? Because these are even numbers, so 12 divided by two equals six. 20 divided by two equals 10. And then I make a next layer. So let's see here. I'll make this layer red again. All right, and can I divide evenly into both these numbers again? Sure, by two. So six divided by two equals three. 10 divided by two equals five. And now I cannot go any further, right? I can't go into either of these numbers because these three is, in the, three is a prime number and five is a prime number, so I can't divide further into it. So what I have to do is if you look here, we have a whole, if we make an L, let me make it in different color, here we go. This is an L right here, right? L. L stands for least common multiple. So if I multiply all these things together, two times two times three times five, we will get our LCM. So what is that? Two times two equals four. Um, four times three equals, I hope you guys know I'm just going here. So two times two equals four. Now four times three, that equals 12. And then 12 times five equals, Let's do it because it's a little bit harder to do that one in our head, right? Let's see here. 5 times 2 equals 10. 5 times 1 equals 5 plus this plus the 1 equals 6. So our LCM equals 60, just like we got before. Sorry, it's written so ugly. I'm left-headed. I'm using the mouse on my right hand. All right. All right, the last one I'm going to work on today is number 10. If there's enough time, I might get cut off. Um, it says boxes that are 8 inches tall are being stacked next to boxes that are 20 inches tall. What is the shortest height at which two stacks will be the same height? So we're going to do an LCM for this. Um, so let me do here skip counting, basically, right? 8, 16. If you know your math facts, this is great. Not get a uh, chart out, and it'll help you out. 8, 16, 32, um, 40, 40. Oops, 48. Let me try to make this longer. Um, 56, 64. We'll stop at 80, okay, just to be safe. 64, 72, and 80. All right, now we have to make a list for our 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Well, do you, I already see that there's some common factors here, right? Are some common multiples so I'm gonna just color them in red real quick I know I have 80 um, there's 40 right are there any others doesn't look like it so what's our least common multiple the smallest one of these well in blue it's gonna be 40 so what is the shortest height at which the two stacks will be the same height we're going to say at 40 inches. 40 inches. All right. I hope you guys uh, study up on this. If you're confused on anything, make sure you ask questions. Email Mr. Burstall at www.mrburstall.com. Or come see me after school or Mr. Burstall early in the morning uh, for extra help. Check your answers. Have a good day.